Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have more meatloaf on the agenda today and I'm excited because I love meatloaf. Yes, you do. Why do you love meatloaf? I think just mostly because I grew up with it. Like not all of it, but Paradise by the Dashboard Light it, was a staple in my childhood driving <laughs> to the cottage. So I just, yeah. Which I just is, love his energy. Like he's so creative and theatrical and dramatic. Yeah, but which is kind of weird that you grew up listening to Paradise by the Dashboard Light, given the meaning of that I know, song. I know, I know, I <laughs> know. But, um, you know, I, I mean, that's what I was thinking when you were saying it and what yeah. the viewers are probably thinking. It's like, you grew up listening to that when you were a kid? <laughs> but I mean, I get it because you don't, the way it sounds, right, you don't think of it that way. It's just such yeah. like theatrical rock performance, right? Yeah, for sure. And as a kid, like my aunt and uncle that used to take us to the cottage when we would listen to this, they took us to a lot of plays and musicals and stuff like that too so i feel like just like the theatrical dramatization of it was just like the theme of that kind of relationship yeah so, so to clarify you said listen to this but you have not heard this one are you no, not sure that you've heard i don't this one? Mm, i don't know i mean we used to play that album but like paradise by the dashboard light was the one on repeat because my brother loved it so i would say maybe i've heard this but i'm probably like not anywhere near as familiar right so this this album bad to hell mm -hmm. clearly had so many bangers on yes it, right because yeah. the last song that we did on the channel, which was a great, was Battle to Hell, the yeah, self-titled track, track mm -hmm. from the album. We got Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. That's also from Battle to Hell. So yeah. you can see why this album did so well. I think it sold over like 40 million copies. Still, I think it, more recently, it even went to the charts again. Yeah, probably after he passed away. Yeah, and that was 2022. I think yeah, he passed away, so. right? Um, so, uh, you know, songwriting is great. The performance is great. Mm -hmm. And apparently also, I just we just found out looking into him a little bit more that he was in over like 50 films. Yeah, I had no idea, which like, makes sense why he's like so dramatic and yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's true. Anyway, so we got two out of three amp ad. We do have a little pop quiz question alongside yes. our video. So would you like to elaborate on what that is? Yeah. So the writer for this song was inspired by an Elvis song. So what was the name of that Elvis song? Yeah. That was pretty cool to find that one out yeah. too. Uh, anyway, so that's all we know that, that uh, this is inspired by Elvis in some capacity. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we've learned a little bit more about meatloaf. And now it's time to take our learning process a little bit further. You ready? Yeah, let's do it.
hold on, brother. <laughs> Just getting all the way in there. This is so great, man. I am so impressed every single time we do meet Loaf. He's just such an amazing artist. He's killing it. Yeah, it's honestly, it's really hard to take this in on the first listen. Take mm-hmm. everything in, I should say. Yeah. Um, because he's got so many great lyrics, and I'm trying to pay attention to them, but I'm just so blown away by the musical composition at the same yeah, time. For sure. You know, the and subtle it's... use of the keys and the choir feel that they have with yep. the backing vocals in certain sections. and Even just know, how he's using his vocal. Yeah, well, that's the icing on top, right? It's just he's... This is, to me, out of all the songs that we've done thus far, I feel like this is his best vocal performance. Yeah, I feel like this allows his vocal to really shine. Like, I feel like in Paradise by the Bat... Paradise by the Dashboard Light, there's a lot of different vocal range in that with Mm -hmm. a lot of like the push and pull between the female and the um, male vocals and like telling the story and it kind of has a lot of highs and lows. Whereas with this, it's more of just like his vocal is just on display. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did um, I'll Do Anything for Love Love, as well. And like that was great, you know, great performance by him. But I just feel like this is so soulful. Yeah, I would agree with that. And he's it's it's beautiful and capturing like it normally is but goes alongside with these great lyrics too and the way he's saying those lyrics and emphasizing it it just Mm -hmm. sticks out so much so much more than you know your everyday artists you know the way he's just able to capture the emotion in the song is really really unique yeah and you're literally just sitting here like you know, so but, captivated. Yeah, but we had said in the beginning with the trivia question that this was modeled after an Elvis song. Yep. And I can totally see that. I can picture Elvis singing this song. Yeah. The way they've written it, yeah. I think they're trying to emulate Elvis a little okay. bit. Yeah, I mean, the, we haven't told you what Elvis song it is yet, but I'm not familiar with the, like the Elvis song. I'm not song familiar song. with it either. Okay. I'm just saying Elvis's yeah. style that oh, we've got yeah, to yeah. know. Yeah. It's it remind like I can picture Elvis like singing the song. Like his delivery and yeah. how he just captivates the audience with the emotion. And, yeah, so yeah. I think Meatloaf is emulating a mm. little bit. He's clearly at, you know adding his own style and yeah, doing yeah. it his way for sure. But I that's what I feel like they wrote it purposely yeah. to to kind of mimic Have it a bit. Kind of similarities. Yeah, there. Well, I mean it inspired the song anyway. So yeah. awesome, awesome song. Really, really impressed. What about you? You know the song. You were singing I recognize it? the chorus a little bit. I think the the chorus is what I remember. I don't really remember it and it's entirety uh, but I'm really enjoying it like you said I think it really highlights his vocal capabilities and it really puts the spotlight on him again like also there's the theatrical performance of like him and you know he's passionate and singing but it's less of like because of the other one we did the music video for I'll do anything for love and that was very different yeah. than this um, and then we did the um, I don't remember what the video for bad out of hell was that a video yes and then we did, so for me, I feel like in Paradise by Dash, like, he's like running around and like doing all this stuff. And it was like very like active and you were like really, but this is more of just like, he's just there singing his heart out type mm-hmm. thing. So I feel like it's just very, the spotlight's on him and he's just like, you know, has this incredible vocal and you're just like completely captivated by the talent and the passion there. Yeah. And so you do recognize it a little bit. Just the chorus. Just the chorus. Um, but uh, so that with that said, any lyrics that stood out to you when you were listening to this? I know, um, you know, it's hard to pick up, like I said, everything in you know, the first listen. Yeah. But I, for me, like you said, um, icicle similar to tears, which was, you know, uh, very poetic in the way he said it. There was another one in there as well. I can't remember off the top of my head with that. He said that really stood out to me. I'll have to go back and listen to it a second time, but anything else for you? Yeah. I think mostly just like the theme of that, you know, he, he has this relationship that he, he cares about this person and he, you know, like likes them and wants them, but he just can't make his feelings be that he wants to commit to the relationship or love them. Right. Okay. Well, we'll see if we pick up any more meal lyrics yeah. in the back half and uh we'll rewind it a little bit so got a half a song left which is great because i'm loving this one
think it's also crazy, it speaks to his talent, that he's that passionate in his delivery for a song that he didn't even write. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, he's got a great writer, clearly. Yes. And they have a great you know team that they've put together, and mm-hmm. they complement each other awesomely. So, yeah. like you said, to be able to kind of capture you know, what the writer was thinking yeah. when he was and writing really it. really bring the, that passion and that emotion to fruition. But I think that comes back to him being, a, you know, the ultimate performer. Yep. Right? We've seen the, yep. we've talked about the theatrics, we've seen the theatrics, and he brings the theatrics even with his vocal performance mm-hmm. as well. So um, yep. it was interesting, you know, it's kind of like, you know, two out of three ain't bad, like I want you, I need you, but I can't love you. Um, it's, it's almost like the way he's performing it wasn't comedic in any way, Mm -hmm. but it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face. The lyrics, the way it comes off. It's like, I want you, I need you, but that's not good enough. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, the person's just obviously not ready to, to commit Commit. at that point, but the way he's saying it, it doesn't feel that way. It's almost comedic. Cause like two out of three ain't bad, but it's like really, Nobody would want that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, like in the first half, I didn't, I mean, I thought it was more of just like a commitment issue of like, like the way I interpreted it was that somebody who didn't want to commit because they're just not ready for a commitment in terms of that. Maybe they don't want to settle down or whatever. Right. But then the second half, he kind of flipped the script of talking about like somebody did that to him. Somebody right? that what? Sorry? Somebody did that to him. Right. So it was almost like I'm hurt and I can't commit because I'm still caught up in being hurt from my last relationship type thing. So then I was like, okay, well, that makes a little bit more sense to me. But right. Yeah. Well, I think it is also storytelling in that it came full circle, right? Like, yeah. you know, at the, in the back half, it was he got kind of a taste of his own medicine, yes. so to speak. Yeah. And and that was like the pain he was uh, communicating with his vocal as yeah. well. Anyways, it was a great performance. Really loved it. So capturing. Yeah. Um, you want to let him know the answer to that pop quiz question? So the answer to the pop quiz question was the name of the Elvis song, which is I want you, I need you, I love you. So kind of comical because their twist is that like, you know, it was, I want you, I need you, I love you. Now it's, I want you, I need you, I can't love you. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's fitting that, like I said, they, you know, wrote it that way the mm-hmm. complexity of relationships you know elvis is known for his love songs i would yes. say right yeah like um, the logging and the needing and yeah. yeah so this was like the next level yeah <laughs> this is the leveling up of the song basically of how it can get complicated it's the sequel <laughs> yeah well i mean that's that's you know part of kind of even the way they wrote it right like there's the other side of the coin right yeah, and so sure. they've got the elvis song and then we've got the other side of the coin yeah. of what can happen with relationships sometimes yeah, right definitely showcasing the creativity there. So where would this place in your meatloaf songs? I mean, now you have a better feel for it and you like meatloaf as a whole. Is this one of your favorites? How, how would, how do you feel about it? I'd say it's like in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. It's not my favorite, but like there's, I think I like this one better than, um, the, I'd do anything for love okay. one. So, cool. and bad of hell is kind of like in the middle there too. Cool. Yeah. I would say this, this is probably Top one or two, I would say. There you this, go. this is a really awesome competition, in my, Good in job, my opinion. Good job, Crushed it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, he's crushed every one, though. So yes. that's really not that surprising. And it's oh, hard to have a favorite when they're all good. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy, hopefully you enjoyed our reaction. If you did, you know what to do now. You got to hit that like button. You got to leave us a comment. You got to let us know where you'd like us to go, and uh, you got to hit that subscribe button if this is your first time on the channel because we've been growing this community tremendously over the past year. Yep. Um, it's all thanks to all your. Support. Thanks so much, guys. So, uh, if you wanna, if you're new here and you wanna come alongside us, we'd love to have you, and the community would love to have you as well. So, uh, it's been enjoyable, but we can plan to continue for the foreseeable future, and we drop two videos every single day, so you can count on that going forward. Other than that, that's it for me. Is that it from you? That's it for me. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. See you guys in the next one.